So I tend to try and take, you know, try and stay away from stressful jobs and things like that. Any so job <laughs> becomes stressful True. when it has to become stressful. When it has to. So become you stressful. know, even True. if you, uh, I mean, a teacher, a doctor, an anchor, anything can uh, mm. has stressful, uh, you know, situations. True. True. It, 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 that's that's very true. It's just, you know, it's it's more so for some jobs than others. Oh, that's true. So, okay. You know, and then obviously the the amount um, of stress that, that involves, a person yeah, takes yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. In any in any particular, if you've got a uh, a nice little cozy job where you know you don't rush for timelines and you don't have deadlines to meet or you're not doing live shows. Mm. You know, I, can, I, I can't I, think of any such <laughs> job. Yeah, I think yeah. every everything <laughs> is stressful now. True, doctor. You know, you came the last time as well, and you have brought again some pamphlets as well. I'm sure there are some nice um, recipes. Last time you were also yeah. men mentioning oil free and stuff. People are looking for quick fixes, mm. you know, these days, and uh, they say that usually you must have. You are a doctor. You must know people. You know, going to doctors and saying, "You go goli de de." They don't want to move around. They don't want to exercise. They don't want to, you know, quit their bad habits. Maybe smoking and all goli de de. So, are there any golis for it? Any medication? There are, there are actually. Um, the one tablet which we've seen has really helped over the last ten years is a group of drugs called statins. They come in different names. Um, you've got a tovastatin, simvastatin, which are the chemicals in those drugs. But they come in different names like Lipiket or Lipitor or uh, different trade names, which I won't go into the details of at this point. But essentially, those drugs, when they were initially developed, they were developed for people who had high cholesterol levels. Mm -hmm. So we started giving those drugs to those people. But what we noticed was that over time, they actually caused uh, changes or they, 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 they actually had a very beneficial effect on the blood vessels and the lining of the blood vessels. Okay. So then we uh, you know, research showed that you know if you give those drugs to people who have normal cholesterol levels, even in those people, they have a beneficial effect. Mm. And what they tend to do, see what happens in a heart attack is your blood vessel tend to get narrowed. Mm. Once your blood vessel is, is, is narrowed down, it impedes the flow of blood to the heart itself because right. the heart is a muscle. It needs blood to keep keep right. pumping and keep working as a muscle. Mm. So if that blood supply is impeded by any obstruction in the blood vessels that will obviously predispose to a heart attack of course so what these ves what these particular drugs tend to do is prevent those deposits from occurring fine if you've got a deposit there already there's very little that, that this drug can do but if you start taking it today your chances of a heart attack five years down the road are much less than your than than, than what they would be if you were not taking so it. this is something that can be t <coughs> taken preemptively it yeah. is just you know Somebody who doesn't have, who's not hypertensive, who mm -hmm. doesn't have such issues, uh, but should already uh, include it in their diet. They should, which is why we've st you, you've probably heard, you know, people talking about, about taking aspirin once mm -hmm. they're over the age of 50. Yes. Now we've started recommending these to patients over, you know, over the age of 50, along with aspirin. You know, you, 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 you've got a high um, uh, you know, risk index index for heart disease. You know, you've got heart disease in the family. Mm. You, you know, your dietary habits are not what they ideally should be, or you're hypertensive, or you're diabetic. We advise these drugs, and people do take them. You know, sometimes they have, obviously, like anything, any any other drug, they do have side effects. Mm. But at the same time, the side effects are uh, they're not life threatening, they're and manageable. They're, they're manageable, and they occur in only a small minority, one to two percent of patients who take them. Okay. So we tend to recommend these highly, and people do take them. And what age group would you say that if you know if you want to start taking it, start taking it? Then? We normally advise over fifty. Okay. Uh, that is the age group that we advise. But obviously, if you're at a higher risk, for example, if you know if heart disease runs in your family, mm. or if you've got diabetes. Then, you tend to, then, then we tend to recommend these earlier on. Okay. And unfortunately, what tends to happen is that, um, again, because of the dietary habits, cholesterol levels tend to be higher in most of our population. Mm. So, um, uh, higher than what they should be. So, we recommend these to almost everyone, really. So, 40, because I, I know that a lot of people are watching and yet we do not want to give any wrong advice no, here as well. No. So, maybe 40 onwards, something? 40 onwards, but it all it's all decided upon the basis of your risk factors. If so, you know, the five risk factors that we look at as far as the heart disease is concerned, smoking, hmm. hypertension, diabetes, uh, family history, and male sex also tends to predispose to uh, heart disease. You are a higher risk of developing heart disease if you're, if you're a male as opposed to being okay. a female. All right. um, it's just the way you know, the human body is designed. Females tend to be protected by the, the hormonal changes until the age of 50, until, until they reach menopause. Okay. 
So that. men should be more, you know, beware of anything. You know, we are talking about this drug as well, but the good thing is, and I think the doctor would uh, agree, uh, consult your doctor. Yeah. Consult your physician, talk to him, and then you take it, not because we are talking about it here. Yeah. But what again was it called? It's, uh, people would perhaps want to know the trade names. It comes in names such as Lipiget or Lipitor. Okay. Or uh, there's, there's different names, you know, other names as well. I don't know how much you'd want me to promote those particular drugs. Okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I think that is enough. And the first one you took the name, actually, I remember it because my mother took it. Yeah. Uh, so, so I remember that. Now, I was reading somewhere, and you can clear this myth if it is a myth, that if you are, uh, you know, if you have, a, a, uh, you, you have a heart attack and you are driving yourself to wherever, you know, the clinic or the hospital, start coughing uh, a lot so the blood circulation, you know, gets going as well. And that can uh, you know at least curtail the damage or something is any truth in that uh, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether how true that is um, obviously uh, people pick things up uh, you know, in different places but that is not standard advice now we, we it, it, sh it, it helps um, in a particular situation uh, when we're doing a certain kind of procedure like for example when we're doing an angioplasty uh, which is essentially the treatment, the, the operation that we do for a heart attack. Hmm. Uh, when we're doing that, and God forbid, you know, if a patient is going into a cardiac arrest situation, we tell them to cough, and that tends to um, relieve the the changes which are happening in the heart at that point in time. Okay. And even mm -hmm. that, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But to say that you know, if you should cough and you're having a heart attack, I don't think that's going to be particularly useful. And I doubt if anybody's going to remember that either. Exactly. There are other things that we recommend to patients who are known to have heart disease. For example, there's a small tablet which we advise people to keep under the tongue. It comes in the name of Angesid hmm. or it comes in, it, it, with, with, uh, in, in form of a spray as well called nitrile spray, which most patients have. It's, it's a bright red colored spray. It comes in a very small bottle. Hmm. Um, and what we've noticed, what we, what we advise patients to do is if you're having chest pains, similar to the pains that you had when you, when you had a heart attack, mm. pains that we call angina pains, which yeah. is what most heart patients, they're familiar with the term. If you're having those, what you should do is either use a single spray under the tongue or keep a tablet under the tongue and just suck on it. Give it 15 minutes. Mm. If it goes away, wonderful. If it doesn't, take another tablet. Okay. Give it another five minutes. If it goes away, splendid. If it doesn't, come straight to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the standard advice you get for these. Okay, so it's, it's good to keep it with you wherever mm. you are because you know it can happen anywhere. Exactly. Um, uh, doctor, my fin final question to you, now tomorrow uh, is World Heart Day and uh, we're talking about awareness and you know, uh, what advice would you give to Pakistanis specifically? Because I understand that you've been around the world. I don't know how much Pakistanis suffer from it more than you know the rest of the world. Again, we were talking mm. about lifestyle and mm. all. But in comparison, if you could give a few, you know, quick pointers, tips for Pakistani lifestyle people. Sure. Um, just yesterday, I was joking to one of these drug companies who had brought something to something in to eat from McDonald's, mm. and I was I was joking to them. They were actually a company who uh, who make these drugs, the statins. And I was joking to them. Look, you're, you're promoting a drug which is meant to lower cholesterol levels, and here you are serving us McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You know, so that is a contradiction in terms. So unfortunately, yes. that is how. That explains the dilemma of the Pakistani society. We know what, what we need, we've got it there available to us, but unfortunately we don't realize how high a risk it poses to our health. And, and we, we tend to ignore that risk and mm. just get on with life as usual. True, true. So, um, and that, and for the, 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 while that is very prevalent in the Pakistani society, it's, it's prevalent in other parts of the world as well. It's more in the American society than in the British society. Mm. British tend to be more aware as compared to the Americans, but we're a, we're, we're a lot like the Americans, you okay. know, like we, you know, we can just get we on. We know it and we we'll, kind of sideline yeah, it, ignore yeah, it for exactly. a while. Yeah, exactly, and we like our McDonald's and we like our KFCs, huh. you know, so um, it's, it's, uh, uh, it, that is something which is very important. Huh. You know, okay. diet, uh, I must emphasize, dietary changes, you must watch what you eat. All right. Okay. And people tend Great. to ignore that. Great. Oil-free things. Oil-free things. Can manage. Oil-free things, avoid uh, fried foods. Hmm. Um, and I remember the last time you came also you were very specifically stressed on the part that anything that you know we make with a lot of oil and uh, everything has a recipe where it can be oil free as exactly. well. Exactly. And even if you, if, if you like to use oil then you can use uh, oils which are vegetable extracts as opposed to you know saturated fats like desi ghee which, are, huh. which we tend to use a lot of people do Absolutely. prefer. It obviously has a better taste but 
you know, vegetable extract oil is not that yeah, bad. Yeah, but if you want to live longer to have the better tastes yeah. in life, then yeah. you have to do, you know, make little sacrifices like that. Exactly. Thank you very much, Dr. Aurangzeb, for coming here and talking to us. And uh, I'm going to take one of these, by the way. That's fine. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, taking a short break and we'll catch you after that. I was hoping there would be some nice recipes here, uh, but there's a lot of information here, which is also good. Yeah. Okay, quotation time now, and I am sure, I am positive that you are going to like this one because uh, this is interesting. This is uh, something that you will get. This is by Maliki McCourt. If I'm pronouncing it right, resentment is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. How about that? You know, we were talking about tension and heart diseases. There's a lot of uh, relation over there. Resentment also falls into that category. Um, yeah, do not take this poison. Okay, now, word for you guys. And this word is really interesting. I must confess, I had never heard you know, of it before. And it uh, came to me out of the blue as well. So, you know, I want to share it and we can learn it together. Um, please roll drums. Yes, today this morning roll rums <laughs> okay and there it is the word of the day get about see what i mean get about it means someone who roams about in search of amusement or social activity and there's a term don't get about is also used as an admonition to uh, admonition to sit still and not squirm or wander around a room so you can also use it that way anyway I do have an example for you which should uh, make it easier for you to understand you could say so and so never did a day's work in his life but was the get about of the city rubbing shoulders with the who's who and taking frequent foreign vacations I am sure we all know one or two get abouts in our lives don't we or more yeah Oh well, so you see, I knew that you would like the word. Okay, now I hope you have taken heed from what we were talking about with Dr. Aurangzeb and um, you know, keeping the heart diseases away. But one sure shot way to get rid of depression may also be as simple as having coffee regularly. Yeah, if you want me to give you a scientific explanation, well, I haven't got one. All I can tell you is that the Archives of Internal Medicine, US, suggests women should drink more coffee to boost their mood and caffeine it seems is the key player here it is known to enhance feelings of well-being and energy and what's more researchers say this adds weight to the work of others which found lower suicide rates among coffee drinkers too yeah i guess it's decided then go grab a cup of coffee and if you take my suggestion try the hazelnut flavor you'll be hooked take care see you today